Today we are going through the NFC North, some great teams, some trash teams, but a lot of good fantasy assets, and we got Mike the Fantasy Hitman back from overseas. Like the video, subscribe, and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's good to be back. It's good to be back, America and nay, world. <laughs> Mike is back Tuesday, July 5th. Jason is here, so we have the full gang back together. Wee! <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, Jason's definitely here. No more Jay Grizz. Divisional breakdown shows. All the deucers in the house as well. So, Brooks Brooks is back. You were off for a few days, Brooks. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can say that almost all the time. Just okay. classic Brooks. Yeah. yeah, that's me. Going yachting. I was going <laughs> to say, do you, you, do you see this situation with Mr. Bezos? <laughs> do, do you know what's going on with Bezos? I mean, I assume you do. No, nah, I don't pay You're attention. You're not. You to don't him. follow one one billionaire doesn't, doesn't follow another. I say he doesn't pay attention to poor people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you, Do you know the Bezos situation? No. What's nobody going on with knows him? this thing. No. What's happening with Bezos? I mean, this is the most megalomillionaire maniac thing going on. He's got a five hundred million dollar yacht. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. And he built it in in like Amsterdam. I okay. I am aware of this. And situation. and and now the only way to get it to the ocean because it's so big is he has to get it out from where they're building it through this area that has a famous historical bridge. And he's paid the city oh, to no. disassemble the bridge. <laughs> but the city has revolted against oh. against the, the Amsterdamians. Uh, <laughs> exactly. And so they have basically they've protested. They have set, they have organized uh, the throwing of rotten eggs. If he ever attempts to move it, they're going to have an organized group of people just hurl rotten Where eggs do you get at that the many yacht. Rotten eggs? You got to prepare for that weeks in advance. I don't know. Doesn't an egg go rotten the second it explodes on the side of a boat? Is that yeah. fair? There's Is that not, fair? When you're egging a yacht, yeah. there's not really a big difference between a, a freshly laid egg and a rotten <laughs> one. It's still an egg on your yacht. And so, and so now they've ceased. So he, his yacht is stuck. So, Brooks, I know you've probably been through something like that, but how do you even endear yourself to these people to let your your $500 million yacht out? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that's I mean, easy. You just pay him off, and he will. What? That's, I that's think a you ridiculous should, situation. I think you helicopter it out. Oh, oh. Now you have to build a, like a billion-dollar helicopter of course. <laughs> to get your $500 million <laughs> yacht out. It's not a problem. <laughs> But yes, Brooks is back from another yachting adventure. <laughs> Al Borland, Kyle in the building as wow. well. Turn that thing into an airship. Yeah. And yeah. then I mean, once you build that though, you're gonna be like, This yacht is stupid. I'm just gonna live in this helicopter. That's now. true. You build that big of a helicopter, <laughs> the yacht is is dumb. Um uh, and then Mike, you're back from Iceland. You had yes. a you had an international journey with a family, which Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Kudos. How how was it? Magical. You loved it. That that place is like a. It's like being on a foreign planet. Yeah. It is a, like, yeah. We we won't make it an Iceland podcast because I could go on and on and on. But it was it was fantastic. It's gorgeous. Unbelievable. So that means that unbelievable Icelandic people yes. when they come here, they're like, it was like being on another planet. We it's just we death. did wonder that a lot. It's like, okay, if you live here, do you? Just become numb to the fact of of what you get to see every day. It's, it's or do you recognize? It's why they were so angry when they had to go to Los Angeles to play the Mighty Ducks. Yes. Oh, I. That's why I they, totally get it now. That's why they wore black. It was in mourning for the the You're land like, this, that they left. This place is a dump. Where's my waterfalls? Yeah, that's why Gunnar Stahl had the <laughs> attitude. All right, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the news. <laughs> News and notes from around the league. 
I also getting, really like. I'm getting that, corrected on the Reg. I was gonna say uh, what I loved about that discussion most was that he is now Bezos. Who is? I thought it was Jeff Bezos. No, oh, I mean, but I either way, that's what I, I always thought. Too, I don't for the care. Record. Yeah, but I'll Bezos, be quiet, please. Bezos is really fun. <laughs> Uh, no, I was saying I'm getting corrected on the reg with my Mighty Ducks trivia. It was the Junior Goodwill Games oh, in of Los course, Angeles. Of so course. I just got corrected on the spelling of Gunnar Stahl this morning. So Kyle keeping it on lockdown. Here's some uh, fantasy football news for you. <laughs> uh, the Athletic is reporting it's highly unlikely J.K. Dobbins plays in the preseason. Jason and I were talking about this last week. It has not gone the right direction for any sort of draft confidence right in jk dobbins jason you were pretty bullish on dobbins early in the offseason just with what you believe this offense is going to be about yeah and I, uh it's not looking great i was i i love the talent and i i didn't mind the timeline of a simple acl injury there were rumors when it happened that it was more than an acl that it might have been an lcl as well and now with this news the recovery looking like it is not on the timeline you would have expected it seems like it's a bigger injury, and you know you look at you look at what happens with a lot of players when they come back from a more difficult knee injury. And that first year back, they're not great. Look at Saquon last year; um, you know, took some time to really get going. If he's not playing in preseason, this is a player that's really hard to trust. And then you look at the depth chart, and you're like, okay, Gus Edwards. But that's what I was going to ask. Do we have a Gus report? Edwards is is uh, still aiming for Week One despite absence from workouts. Mm -hmm. so, so literally the Ravens blog on ESPN's headline is Ravens hopeful injured star players will return. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's so bizarre of all of their actions over the off season have said, these guys are going to be ready. You can, there's no way they want to go into the season again, having to pick up guys off of the, Oh, they don't have to pick anyone up. He's already on the roster, Mike. Well, I was just saying like, Baby? they went, they went with, Devontae Freeman, they went with like real guys who were superstars in their time, but they are uh, a bit past their prime now. And they didn't make a move, except they picked up uh, Beatty in the draft, but late. Yeah, it's not Beatty. Oh. Beatty is Tyson Williams here. Oh, no. They're going with uh, the other guy on their roster, Mike Davis, oh. former Atlanta Falcons okay, superstar. But we saw that last year with Devonta Freeman. <laughs> exactly. They're going to play someone like that over, you know, they want the vet who's not going to make mistakes, and that's upsetting. So Lamar's the RB1 again. Got it. Uh, that's This is a situation Yeah, Baltimore I mean Baltimore to figure out to maybe, I mean, if you're doing some best ball drafts, like taking the shot, you know, with your last pick or so. It, and where's, uh, hey, Kyle, where's Beatty going? Is he even being drafted? He's undrafted. Yeah, it's really tough. That seems to be a mistake. When, you're, when I'm doing these drafts, I keep passing J.K. Dobbins by and wondering how far do I let him fall. I, I have found a lot of failure over the years buying the injury dip. So right. I, I'm letting someone else take him uh, at this point. Well, and it is quite plainly speculation. We don't know if he hurt the LCL or not. Nobody knows. I mean, I, the, I would hope somebody knows. The, like, the, the team. Well, nobody, nobody's letting us know. I mean, the the team. Do, all, all the reports from camp, they don't know. The beat reporters covering the team. Right. It's just speculation based on the timeline having a problem. Um, is, isn't your job as a beat reporter to, like, know all the ins and the outs of the well, team? Well, I, you know. Some doctor doctor uh, patient privilege there. Oh, yeah. So. Um, the old HIPAA. Yeah, let's, uh, let's move on. Wait, wait, we're reporting on this? Tyler Conklin okay. separating Con himself as the favorite to start week one in New York for the Jets. It is, it's more worthy of a report in case you were taking a flyer on C.J. Uzama. Okay, that's fair. Because he's missing due to injury, so there may not really be a shot to take in the Jets' tight end room is what I'm saying. Agreed. Despite how much money they dumped into the position. Yeah, three years, $20 million for Conklin. Yeah, uh, three he's, years, he's $24 million for C.J. Uzama. So the Jets run in the organization – like they do. Well, you got to pay them to come there. There's <laughs> right. a premium. There's a Zach There's Wilson a, tax. A buyer premium. Um, not supposed to get a report on Deshaun Watson's case before the week of July 11th. So we're going to keep waiting. Okay. Um, you know, it, it it is almost useless to keep speculating on how long the suspension will be because we will get an answer. But but how long do you think? But <laughs> <laughs> but how long until we know? But I mean, I I think we we went from thinking okay, it sounds like a full season to. 
I'm back in the camp with with what Jason said on the last show or or a recent show. Six to eight games starting to make oh, gosh. more sense because they're going to factor in the year he missed. But he wasn't suspended. Well, they might take the pay away from those games. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Okay. And Let's then if, speculate. If, if, they take, <laughs> if they take the pay away, then he's can a you season really, and a half. Can you retroactively take No, you away? just fine him that amount. I don't know. Yeah, this it, this sucks. He for, won't care. He has a lot. Oh, I I know, but this sucks for that. I mean, everything on that team. Like you, you don't know in the middle of July. The training camp is a couple weeks away, and you don't know who your starting quarterback is. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess you. It's either Watson or Jacoby. I was gonna say you need Watson rankings and Jacoby rankings. Yikes. And then there was some news over the weekend. I'm very sad about this. In fact, <laughs> I think it's. <laughs> One of these I agree with, one I don't, but Sleeper did remove position eligibility uh, for Cordero Patterson. They took him away from being a wide receiver. Uh, he's running back only, so one of the versatile aspects of Patterson on Sleeper removed. Debo will be wide receiver only. That one makes sense to me. The Patterson one, it's tough uh, just because of how often he lined up as a wide receiver. Yeah, but Eckler so, I mean, does that stuff too. and I mean – he he was only that way last year because he was signed as a wide receiver and then converted into the running back before the season started. So, yeah, I, I, I get I, it. It's fine. Yeah. I, it's sixty-eight targets last year, but lined up as a wideout, not just out of the backfield receptions. But you um, need to, you need to know going into your draft. Well, it actually it it stinks because a lot of people have drafted too, and they made picks. But you got to make a call at some point in the off season. Well, so. and, and even though some people have drafted, I know you have drafted and drafted Cordero already this off season. It, it's still relatively early. The majority of drafts haven't happened, so better now than than later. Uh, <clears throat> and they reserve the right to change it back if he lines up a wide receiver all year long. They sure. can they can move it. Uh, any other news? Not a lot of news to talk about. No sir, nothing. Okay, let's uh, let's talk NFC North. Let's get divisional. All right, we're jumping into our divisional breakdowns. In fact, the NFC North is the division we ended with last year because we kept delaying the offseason. Like, we delayed this division as long as possible because of all the madness that was going on with Aaron Rodgers last offseason. These shows are essentially, you know, about offseason changes from 2021 to 2022. A lot of new people listening. Uh, a lot of news to summarize. And we want to give you an overview for fantasy purposes of the offense last year, how it might function in 2022, give our takes on what, you know, Vegas is saying about the win totals, who can win the division. That has, a you know, obviously a big impact, winning games on a number of important fantasy football positions. So what's interesting is, is last NFC North breakdown last year in the offseason, do you guys remember what tweet was put out by Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers right when we did the show? I because it proved prophetic for one of them. I don't. Was it the the goodbye? It was, was it? the last dance. Yeah, the, like the mm. picture of the two of them. It was yeah, the yeah, last okay. dance with Pippen and Jordan, and uh, it it turned out that you know Aaron didn't think it was the last dance yeah. <laughs> when he signed his contract. But it was for Devontae Adams, who was traded away. Packers ended up 13-4 and four last season, um, which at the time of our recording in the offseason last year, the, the Lions were bouncing to like eight wins or something because they didn't know who was going to be there. Sure. Uh, but Aaron Rodgers is back, and uh, that means that they're going to be favorites to win the division, 13-4. and four. They continue to uh, deliver. Their win expectation this year is at ten and a half. That was last year's. Just recapping last year. I got you. Last year's was ten and a half. What is this year's? This year they're at eleven. Eleven. Okay. So you lose Devonte. <laughs> um. I mean, you you get to play the Bears twice <laughs> and the Lions twice. Yeah. So there's four. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pace of play last year, thirty second in the NFL, dead last in pace of play a tenth in points per game. So very efficient offense, had the lead a ton. Um, you know, only 28% of Rodgers' pass attempts came while they were trailing. 
So this was a team that that won a lot of football games. And when it comes to fantasy, you lose Devontae Adams, you lose Marquez Valdez Scantling from the wide receiver room. You add Sammy Watkins. Yep. That's not a that's not an even swap, just so you know. No, it it definitely is not, but everything for the Packers, it's the wide receiver room, the Lizard King in. And, but like I mean this is aside from, you know, Lazard and Cobb, I get you, yeah, you do have to factor in Cobb, but he did not look, you know, truly like uh himself last year as he's getting older, but this is a really new wide receiver room of who will the, the actual starters be. They trade up to go get Christian Watson in the second round. And wh- how much does that affect Aaron Rodgers? Is, is, like, that's my biggest takeaway. I know people want to, well, who's going to be the wide receiver one? And we can argue over that. But it's like all those guys are going late in drafts. And Aaron Rodgers has been such a staple and so consistent of, of, of greatness for fantasy football can he really continue that greatness if he doesn't have a true dominant number one wide receiver? Two or more passing touchdowns in 15 to 17 starts, Jason. Aaron Rodgers right now being drafted as the quarterback 11 as we sort out the running back room. Yeah, that's that's too high for me. Um, I, I, obviously, he is a first ballot Hall of Famer, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. He's going to get it done. They're going to win games. Um, but when you lose, we you know we talked about this with regards to Patrick Mahomes and the the loss of Tyree Kill, but on average, quarterbacks that lose a wide receiver one lose about two fantasy points per game over the last decade. He's going to go down a little bit, and he finishes the quarterback six, and that was on the back of a really high 7% touchdown rate. Um, so I, without Devontae Adams, he's someone that um, I've seen him slip to – really really late in a couple best balls I I will still grab him I have him on a few rosters but as the quarterback 11 I'm taking someone with more upward trajectory um I am warming by the way his career touchdown rate what is that say it's, it's gotta it was be about, close to that it was six percent before the last six point four percent yeah six point one before the last two years six point four if you include the last two years where he was nine and seven point one I believe yeah, I am warming on Lazard leading the way. I don't know what that will translate into. I right. think that'll depend on touchdown totals. But I would set, I would definitely favor Lazard the way they're talking about him and then having competition. That's a rookie, Sammy Watkins, you know, Romeo Dubs, Randall yeah, Cobb, the aged Randall Cobb, who I, I do think will be involved. I mean, tried and true targets, like, like the relationship that they have, will lead to targets. And, and Tunyon won't be back and ready to start the season, so um, you're going to be taking some gambles in the wide receiver. Like, there'll be a team to target in a good matchup to try to find that non-Lazard option and just steal some points if you get it right on a certain week. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm st- like, I still like Lazard's draft price right now considering his, his biggest uh, competition for targets in that system will be the Lizard King and a second round rookie, a fourth round rookie. Is Amari Rogers going to be a factor at all? I mean, it, it seems like probably not, considering he's he just did nothing last There's year. There's so many names that we just said. Yes, that 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 create a problem for drafting players not named Alan Lazard. Yeah, it, it is one of those situations where when you're looking for a breakout candidate, you can't have a much better situation than one of these nebulous wide receiver cores where you're not sure who it is so nobody costs a ton and you have a first ballot hall of famer pick who you think it's going to be and take a shot at one of these guys in your draft and and move on but I mean when you know you talk about a lot Andy um trying to find someone that you can drop week one if you draft at the end of your draft that you kind of know is this player good or not is he in the offense the way we we hope he is I think taking a shot on any one of these guys, Christian Watson, Sammy Watkins, Alan Lazard. Um, yeah, Watkins and Cobb fit that to me, not the rookies. The rookies don't fit the week one drop scenario, but Cobb and um, uh, Watkins, just in case. you know. Right. Now Watkins, we already know, is going to have three touchdowns in week one. So <laughs> maybe trade he's, him. he's a two-weeker. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's kind of nebulous. Now, I, I think the biggest beneficiary, you know, we've seen statistically in the past, when you lose that number one target, vacated targets, they do go to a running back position very often, the running back position very often, and there isn't a much better pass catcher out of the backfield than Aaron Jones. So 
I have high expectations for Aaron Jones. Uh, he had the six most running back receptions already last year, and we saw the playoff game. It was literally every target was Devontae or Aaron Jones. I think Dylan and Jones will be on the field a lot together because they're going to manufacture offense. That's what they do. They figure it out in Green Bay. Yep. So he'd be my – like I feel so confident in Aaron Jones that I'm, I'm more than comfortable having, having him as my RB1 if I want to go wide receiver in the first round of the draft – and come back and get Aaron Jones. Yeah, we've seen Aaron Jones climb a lot in best ball. So right now in sleeper, he's at the 2-3 turn. He's the last pick in the second round. I expect by the time August comes around, he's going to be in the middle of the second. I love, I love Aaron Jones. You know, I, I talked a lot about DeAndre Swift and his upside in that, like, middle of the second area. Those are the two guys I want in the second round more than anyone, Aaron Jones and DeAndre Swift. Uh, quick moment here for A.J. Dillon. Give me the the highest potential finish you see for him, so our listeners ex know what to expect. You know, from the upside of AJ Dillon. The upside is baked in to an injury to Aaron Jones. If Aaron Jones goes down, AJ Dillon becomes a top ten running back for fantasy. So I, I think this is a guy that um, his median projection to me is not otherworldly. He's a low end RB two to me, uh, maybe a middle RB two, but his his upside is tremendous. Because Aaron Jones is not, you know, the most durable, uh, big-bodied back out yeah, there. Yeah, I, I expect Dylan will be a low-end running back, too. And it's not just that, you know, if Aaron Jones, like, misses a ton of time, then A.J. Dillon's great. Aaron Jones will miss a few games. That's going to happen. If you, In those weeks, you're going to be even more thrilled that you have Dylan on your team. Aaron Jones is such a great best ball player. Yeah, we, we he, all agree he on Jones. He disappears, and then you'll get all of the great games. Um, let's take a quick break, and then we'll jump into Minnesota. Okay, let's talk about the Minnesota Vikings. Last year, 8-9. and nine. Uh, The win expectation before the year was 8.5. So all right. they nailed it. Um, more one-score games last year. Uh, than any team ever uh, tied the all-time record for one possession games 14 of their first 15 games were one possession games so That's this wild. is a team that could have had a a vastly different season because they went six and eight in those so you know it, it was close they were on the edge uh, they made a change at the you know head coach position Kevin O'Connell is the new head coach and so they needed something to get them over the hump. And everything we've heard so far this offseason is very, I think, exciting and intriguing for sure. Minnesota's offense because they're reporting a much pass-happier scheme. You have one of the best, if not the best, pure wide receivers in football in Justin Jefferson. And you have a very capable, albeit hyper-efficient, quarterback in Kirk Cousins. You don't know what whether pass happy will translate to those same efficiency stats where he protects the football and kind of, you know, isn't put in that prime time spot all the time. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, he's been known to buckle under the pressure a, a time or two. Um, but I, I actually love the Vikings. This is an offense that I'm heavily targeting right now in my drafts because I think that they are better this year than they were last year for fantasy football. I've got Kirk Cousins right now as a top 10 quarterback, and he is someone that is as unexciting as anyone in a draft. So you want to get him late wherever you are in any format, you can get him late. Um, you know, when you have a, a great receiving core, first of all, they're getting Irv Smith back. And whether or not you think Irv Smith Jr., Big Irv, is a good tight end flyer for fantasy I do but maybe you don't it still helps the offense to get a, a young big target back and KJ Osborne the, these two guys to me Irv Smith and KJ Osborne are young players who are going to elevate their games and fit right in with three other already known amazing pieces in the offense of Justin Jefferson Adam Thielen and Dalvin Cook so you've got a really good chance at a high-powered offense here with a new offensive-minded head, co uh, head coach just kind of unleashing them. I, Kirk Cousins is m more exciting now where like we know who he is as a quarterback. Well, 
<laughs> I guess we're we're all pretty divided. Like I think that Kirk Cousins is a good starting quarterback that can that can win games for your team and, and produces for fantasy. So the past two seasons we've seen 516 attempts and 561 attempts. If and 561 like if that number goes up like the way that they are talking uh you know about like Andy mentioned the all the players are very excited that that's uh the old I mean Zimmer is about as crumudgeny and it will be established as you can possibly get in the NFL and with him out and this new system Kirk Cousins could be one of those surprise quarterbacks where you're like holy crap it's Kirk Cousins was the quarterback six on the year yeah if you were rolling your eyes at how long we're talking about Kirk Cousins <laughs> that's simply because you forget you forget when the pass attempts were much higher in Washington. He was the quarterback five on a season, almost 5,000 yards. Years. He hasn't thrown for more than 4,200 and something yards ever in Minnesota. So he was almost 5,000 in 2016. He was the number five quarterback in 2017. So it is within him to give you a fantasy season that vastly outperforms his average draft position. So that's why he's getting talked about, and he has the weapons, like Jason said. And Dalvin Cook, look, I'm not worried about Dalvin Cook just because the offense passes the ball 40 more times than they do did last year. He's too good and too important to this offense and too good of a pass catcher for me to really, you know, I'll throw shade on him due to injury risk, but not based on offense that may be better. Yeah, once you get past, I think, four running backs in this year's uh, draft when you get to the fifth running back <clears throat> there is a group of about eight guys you can make an argument for and Dalvin Cook could easily be the fifth pick overall and that could end up being a great pick he could drop to the turn and still be a, a better pick last year Dalvin Cook had he was tied for the fourth most carries inside the 15 he had or I'm sorry inside the five he had 15 carries it was so weird that turned into three touchdowns Meanwhile, you have, so you have Damian Harris. He had 15, turned into eight touchdowns. Antonio Gibson, 15 carries inside the five, turned into six touchdowns. Like it, the he had 16 the, the touchdowns luck, the year before. He had 13 touchdowns the year before that. Right. the The bad luck that he received inside the five uh, speaks to it, and I would expect him to. He'll be right around there again. You know, if he gets 15 carries inside the five again, that's not a surprising thing. But what would be surprising is if he stayed at three rushing at touchdowns on those attempts so I expect Dalvin Cook to bounce back in a big way there injuries included Adam Thielen finished 61st at the wide receiver position in 2019 then jumped up to eight in 2020 down to 28th last year missed uh, four games I believe but double digit touchdowns in two consecutive seasons you know you combine pass happy with a player that has a nose for the end zone are you avoiding him because the ceiling isn't what it once was, or are you monitoring that draft position and taking your shot if he gets to a place you like him? I, I find that I am avoiding him in redraft leagues and targeting him in best ball leagues. I think he's going to be very touchdown dependent, and so you're going to have weeks that are fine, but he he is no longer the high-volume 150-target guy that was a fantasy gold mine. That's Justin Jefferson on this team now. So when you get around the goal line, he can still – take people out of their shoes, lay them on the ground, and catch a wide-open touchdown. And I want those on a best ball league where I don't, where I get, you know, I don't have to make the start-sit decisions. Now, he's not being drafted like that former Adam Thielen. He's the wide receiver 30 right now. Yeah, that's why I'm in. I mean, a seventh-round wide receiver that has the potential to finish in the top 24 and score over 10 touchdowns, I'm in on that. Because he's, he's not your wide he is not your wide receiver, too, if you're drafting him in the seventh round, unless you, <laughs> you've drafted, like, all running backs to start. He was the wide receiver seven through the first 12 weeks last year, which is kind of wild, but obviously on the back of touchdowns. Win total this year for Minnesota. If you haven't looked at it, do you want to take a guess? Ooh. I have not looked at it. I would imagine it went up from last year, so I'll say nine and a half. Okay, Mike, do you want to take go, a shot? I was going to go with nine. It is nine. Oh, then I'll take the over. Uh, you like them with to, to win some confidence yeah. with a half game confidence. <laughs> uh, I want you to put the word confidence out of your mind as we move on here. Mm. Uh, yeah. Let's go deeper. 
the uh, <clears throat> Chicago Bears, six and eleven last season. <sighs> they went into the the season with a uh, preseason Vegas win total of seven and a half. Um, three and three in one score games. Matt Nagy, Sayonara, no longer a part of this organization. Matt Eberflus, Luke Getze. It's a new regime for the 27th ranked in points per game, Chicago Bears, 24th in total yards, 23rd in pass attempts, 30th in passing yards, 29th in passing touchdowns. Anemic is a good word. Sure. Uh, didn't throw their 10th touchdown pass until December. <laughs> so anemic might not be strong enough. That's not good. And they went and they said, hey. We can make it work. <laughs> we're going to stick with what we got. <laughs> we're really not going to invest uh, in free agency. We're going to say goodbye to Jimmy Graham and Allen Robinson. And um, look, their offensive line is ranked 31st heading into the season, which is down from where they were in the offseason last year. So if you wanted to say all the cards are stacked against a certain player, more than maybe anybody in the National Football League, that's the place that Justin Fields finds himself in. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you compare that to Zach Wilson, right? Like yeah. two guys drafted last year, um, and one team has done everything they can to build around him, help the offensive line, uh, draft a top 10 wide receiver. Um, the other has said, well, we're we're a year away and we're going to tear down the nubs and see maybe, if he can. Maybe two, Jason. Maybe. Uh, but let's, you know, one of we're the nice things. We're a half decade away. <laughs> so there are a couple really nice takeaways here from the Bears offense for fantasy football, though. Um, even though it is bad and I expect their win total to be bad, I saw like almost 90% of all the money on Chicago was on the under. That's because they're at six and a half right now. <laughs> yeah. In your bra. Oh. <laughs> um I mean, they're just, they project to be a really bad team in all phases of the game, but for fantasy purposes, different discussion. You have Justin Fields, who his value comes from his legs. The first few games last year, he wasn't really running the ball much. They kind of switched that over. I mean, they, they had built this system for Andy Dalton last year and then kind of stuck with that when Fields got in. So you still have hope um, that Justin Fields can be a. 800 yard rushing quarterback if he is he's going to be fine for fantasy he'll he'll have seven eight nine rushing touchdowns and and throw a handful you saw uh last year Jalen Hurts not a lot of weapons and not phenomenal play still be good for fantasy because of that so that's the hope it's a little tough for me to love Justin Fields and in single quarterback leagues I'm not really drafting him in in super flex or best ball I I've commonly grabbed him as a later round guy uh but the player that i'm excited about maybe is is not the best in the world but cole Komet. yeah you, when, yes when you look at, over the last several years of the tight ends who are relevant for fantasy in, a, in an impactful way it's because they're one of the top two targets on their team and there's no chance in my view that he's not one of the top two targets jimmy graham is gone and he he was already a big part of this it's darnell mooney so and he was stealing all Cole those Komet. touchdowns and hundred dollars from you last year. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh, I got rich on Jimmy Graham. <laughs> yeah, so I, I do think Cole Komet is someone who is he's talented. He was he was uh highly drafted for the the year that he came out. Um and the concern with him is going I agree with everything you said, hundred percent. And I like him as a sleeper tight end. But he couldn't find the end zone last year, and I don't know how I, look, we just said they didn't throw ten passing touchdowns till December. So if that if he doesn't occasionally just jaunt into the painted area every once in a while, you could have a I, I see the PPR Cole Komet. I see six for forty eight and no touchdown Cole Komet. And yeah. that, that would be the only downside is you you have an offense that is going to score in the bottom ten. Mm hmm. No, yeah. that, the touchdowns is – if he ends the season with three touchdowns, he won't be great for fantasy. Uh if you give the three Jimmy Graham touchdowns over to Cole Komet, and he ends up with six touchdowns. Then you're big be difference. Pretty happy having 93 targets last year. Like he was essentially an 18 percent target share player. For that to turn into zero receiving touchdowns is like that is a major anomaly. 
statistically. So I, I'm in on Cole Komet. He's very interesting. What you didn't know, and I don't know if you guys had seen this, but oh, the camera no. wasn't on him a lot at the time, uh -huh. but – Timmy Graham would trip him right around the goal line. <laughs> Total grandpa right at, trick. Yeah, right at the one. <laughs> your shoes tied. Um, Except your he, actually, shoes? he actually tied your his shoes, shoes together. Tied? You, uh, he just tied his shoes for him? <laughs> his shoes were tied together. They're nice and tight. <laughs> Meanwhile, that couldn't happen to Jimmy Graham because they're Velcro. Right. Right. Man, we are it's it's a multi year ruthless attack on Jimmy Grandpa. And how much older than Jimmy Graham are we? Like multiple oh, years. Don't, don't. Call him Jimmy Grandma? No, I don't know. He said Jimmy he actually used his real name. Oh, loser. Did he? How much how, how old is Jimmy Graham? He's ninety eight. No. Yes. <laughs> nice. Okay, so we're not give older. Me, than give him. me the real age. He's thirty five, so we are yes. three, two, and one years older. We'll just Great, great. Okay. Hey, I want to talk about that guy's so old. I what a loser. <laughs> Um, he could still do our job at his age. Oh, for sure. Um, I want to talk about Darnell Mooney for a second. Yes. Expectations. My concern with Darnell Mooney is that I, th I think you're going to get exactly what you got over the last eight games of last season, which is, look, he was on 172 target, 95 reception pace during that time. 1,200 yards. Sounds great. But he had four games in that eight-game span that were great. Awesome. And four where you would have regretted putting him out there on the field, 49, 83, 25, I guess you were okay, and then 43. So he had four games that you were thrilled with, four games that were eh, okay, and that's probably what it's going to be like this year for Chicago. Putting Justin Fields in a position to succeed means using the legs that he has, which takes away from the receiving options, and then using David Montgomery, who is a high-volume workhorse type of type of back so i i don't mind mooney at 32 but i'm nervous and he was my my guy last year so i love the talent i'm just nervous about the consistency well that's that's really what should be telling i mean our our history of uh pre-predicting talent a year too early on these my <laughs> oh, guys is, pre is pretty good so uh no i'm 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 fine with mooney i mean if you're drafting him you know the look they're, they're him and adam thielen are going in the seventh round Right, I would so much rather take Darnell Mooney, who's the one for his offense, who young projects upside. to young upside, uh, who projects to have 140 plus targets. Um, you know, I I I think he's still getting better. Um, he, I just prefer upside when I'm drafting in the seventh round versus elderly. Is there really upside though? I I think there is. I mean, well, last year. So here's in, in some interesting numbers on, uh, for a player comparison. Last year, Darnell Mooney over 80 receptions, 1,055 yards. Oh, thank you. Okay, all right. And, Jack knife that in there. Go on. And and four touchdowns. Terry McLaurin, who we all love as a player, 77 for 1,053 yards and five touchdowns. One of those players is being drafted in the fourth, and one of them is being drafted in the seventh. Sure. Yeah, compared to Terry McLaurin, sure. And but yes, we like him as a player, but we don't like him, or at least I don't, as a fantasy player. And if you like Terry McLaurin as a fantasy player, you've got a problem because it hasn't been a good ride. So I'm, that's that's a good example of what can go wrong. But I, I'm I'd rather into, take it in the seventh. I'm into a wide receiver in the seventh who can see 16 targets in one game. It, Give me some more names around him because maybe I'm – In the seventh? Yeah. Get, what are some names going around Darnell Mooney? Do you have any, Kyle? Yeah, I've, I've got him here. I know um, you said Thielen, but, but what yeah, else? Yeah, so Thielen, uh, Drake London, Traylon Burks are the two right on the, either side of Darnell yeah, Mooney. Mooney, Juju, Mooney, Mooney. Juju. Juju. Mooney. Devonta okay. Smith. Mooney. So there you go. Now, Adam Thielen. Who would you rather – would you rather draft Adam Thielen over Mooney? Probably. Because Mooney's not going to end up the – I mean, Thielen had a 12-game run where he was the wide receiver seven. Yep. I don't think you can get that out of Justin Fields and Darnell Mooney. The wide receivers currently in the ADP, I've, it comes down to Adam Thielen or Darnell Mooney who's who I would be drafting. Let's move on to the Detroit Lions. And Well, no, just kidding. Give me a, give me a sentence or two on David Montgomery because I've seen people that, that go all the way. They swing the pendulum so crazily where they're like – Still talking about Khalil Herbert stealing reps from David Montgomery. I am extremely confident in him. Where are you guys? Yeah, I, I think he's the running back 15. I think his volume is secure. Where he's being drafted is like the 3-4 turn. The value is fine there. If you want to load up on some wide receivers and have, you know, if you grab two wide receivers in the first three rounds and you can grab 
David Montgomery as your running back too. I, I love – that's what he is for fantasy. And if you draft him with that in mind, I think it's great strategy. I I think that the end by the end of the year, David Montgomery will be fine. But at his current ADP and with the situation of – the potential for things to go really, really bad for David Montgomery are there. And, like, he, you know, he's like one spot in front of James Conner. So I would – much rather be drafting Connor there, and so I I don't have the confidence that you guys do. Okay, Detroit three and thirteen last year, but man, that three thirteen and one record they fought hard for it. They did. They didn't have the personnel, but Dan Campbell got his guys going. Um, the preseason win total expectation was five last year. Do you want to take a guess at where it's at this year for the Detroit Lions? Six and a half. Oh, I'll take the under on that. Oh, I'll... you're wrong. Six and a half. Oh! It, oh, was, it was six. It was bet <laughs> up. Um, so, I do – I would take the over. I think they'll win seven games. Okay. And, um, you know, th they're a very interesting fantasy football story to look at because, you know, 25th in points per game, 25th in pace of play. Uh Garbage time is something that they look. They spend a, a decent amount of the week in garbage time. Is it garbage time when it's still the second quarter? It. I guess. I guess you're that's asking still, a real question. That's like that's still the game. They I don't think believe. any garbage time in reality can exist outside the fourth quarter. That's my my definition. I don't know that it's garbage time ever if the team knows they're not going to win, but they're just doing their best. You know what I mean? Oh, sure. Like I think it, the other team has to be wanting to play a prevent style defense to qualify it as garbage time. Well, then no garbage time for the Detroit Lions. Just very pass happy. They're very. They Forced. were a very very bad defense last year. Thirty first uh, in points allowed. Um. So to to add to the Dan Campbell, you know, love fourth best against the spread, but only three wins. So they fought. There were closer games than what a lot of people expected. Uh, and this off season, DeAndre Swift's going to come into the year healthy. We hope he stays that way. Amon Ross St. Brown ended the season as a playoff king. He's so confusing. I oh, I'm I'm so sad to hear you say that because my whole thing here is I have no idea what to do with Amon Ross St. Brown. So you're sad that we agree? Yes, I need like. <laughs> Why are you sad that we agree? I'm sad because I want the answer and i was hoping oh. you could provide it I, don't I, have, have. I have a different answer than both of you according to our rankings okay because you both have you have translated you put your confusion into the computer and it spit it out 30th and 33rd okay so mike at 30 jason at 33 that sounds pretty good that sounds <laughs> accurate um i i put the same amount of confusion into it but i got number 19 out Ooh. okay so I think, you know, Goff is capable, Amon Ra is capable of, you know, 10 targets a game type of numbers. I mean, we know Jamison Williams is going to be a slow developing situation. I mean, how many total targets, if you were to go bet it, how many total targets on the year is Jamison Williams getting? I, I think the line. Is it 50? I would take the under on that line. So, you know, that. It's going to be Amon Ra as a primary target. DJ Chark is not going to steal a million targets in Correct. this offense. So I think from a PPR perspective, Amon Ra will volume his way into the top 20 at the end of the year. Now, this is not to say you get the playoff king version. Oh, he was so good. But this was, this was a rookie. So you kind of throw out the beginning of the year to a degree anyways. Yeah. Um, and you try to look at this uh, fairly, and I think that, you know, Four or five targets coming in garbage time most weeks alone is going to pile up. He he should be the chain mover. I mean, the you can't really do what he did on the field and look as good as he did doing it without for being, as long of a run without being capable. That being said, during that stretch, the majority of his success came without T.J. Hawkinson and without DeAndre Swift, who they could easily be the the first two targets ahead of Amon Ross St. Brown, but. Amon Ross should be in that mix. And to start the season, and that's for draft purposes, you know, if you're talking about your home leagues, your redraft, your keepers, 
the beginning of the year is far more important than the end of the year uh, for draft. Jameson Williams not going to be there to start the season, so I do think Amon Ra. I've statted him out for the season, but I, I, you know, based on everything that's being said, he should be drafted a little bit ahead of that ranking because he should be a stronger start to the year than to, than at the end. And I'm not trying to make a my guy case for Amon Ra. That's not where I sit. I'm not extremely excited about it. I think he's the kind of player that may lose some of his value over the back half of the year as Jamison Williams becomes involved. But, I, I mean, I have him for 100 catches. Sure. And, um, you know, he had 90 last year, so I have him for 106. And 100 catches, you know, you, you're in a half-point, full-point league. It's going to add up pretty quickly. It's, I mean, six straight weeks of double-digit targets. To his, finish. his target like, pace was like 190 it, it, like, It's so absurd, but they, and that story has been laid out of, you know, the absence of DeAndre Swift, TJ Hawkinson of like it Amon Ra, it, it comes down to for me, how much do you actually really believe in the player? Because we we've seen, you know, in the past, we've seen guys who actually aren't that great do things like this. They just they catch fire at a particular time when their opportunity was incredibly high. He was a fourth round pick, but you know, out of USC and to do those things he has to have at least some ability, but can he replicate anything close to that? I would bet against that. Yeah, he was 89th percentile uh, in our explosiveness metric that you see on on the website, player profiles. Um, that's the place he excelled, uh, 4 5 one, 40. But he was just shifty. I mean, he just found open spots on the field, and that's a hard-to-quantify thing. When you go back and watch the tape, as the play developed, his def the defense around Amon Ross started to disappear. Um, Hawkinson, DeAndre Swift, both interesting for fantasy purposes. Jason really went against the grain when we went to Detroit and selected DeAndre Swift <laughs> as his breakout pick, uh, but for good reason. RB seven from weeks one through eleven. You know, you you can. There's only a handful of players that could actually have could push. You know. 80-plus receptions, 90-plus receptions at the running back position, he's one of them. Yeah, I mean, you've got your Austin Eckler that, you know, I've seen Austin Eckler often drafted at the number three spot this year. Um, obviously a much, much better offense, more touchdown upside with Eckler than with DeAndre Swift, but it's a similar style of player, a guy who is truly uh, game script proof because he is so involved in the receiving game. And so I, I would think that DeAndre Swift, if he's in the second round, is just he's a great pick. Him, Aaron Jones, I talked about it earlier. Guys that can catch the ball and are extremely involved in their offense and are very, very talented. And going you, to be losing. Sure. I mean, so, I mean, keep dumping it off in, in garbage time. But, when you, you know, it's like when you're looking at these running backs that are kind of slipping a little bit, are they – what is their core talent? And DeAndre Swift is an extremely good running back – and great in the receiving game. This is where fantasy players can get really stupid sometimes. And, you know, if you're obsessive, if you're listening here is July, which, by the way, three shows a week starting right now. Oh, no. Oh, July baby. is here. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday shows. August, it's coming, Mike. Prepare yourself. Get the jet log over with. The jet Five. log? The jet log. It's yeah. where you... I didn't say log, did oh, I? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For I've got sure. nods from the deucers. Look, yeah, it kind of sounded like that. Look, you might have had a jet log Tro as I, well. I dropped one in that plane. <laughs> yeah, that's a jet did log. Did you? You had a plane poop? I didn't. Oh. oh. Sorry. It was just too have good. Have you joke. had a plane poop? Oh, I have wrecked an air an airplane bathroom. No. Before. When you got to go... But you're not look, dropping into any dude, water, man. I don't care what... I will not... I would... No, you won't. Because you I won't even... sew that thing up. We have different... Uh, inner workings like w when I got poop, poop sensibilities when I gotta go look I am miles up in the sky and there's nowhere else for me to go I am not afraid to to, uh, to rock to one rock in turbulence one? so wait, let me, <laughs> I gotta dig in uh, with your jet log here yeah. um, <laughs> was there because oftentimes there's a waiting a waiting uh, a queue sure outside the door do you happen to remember when you wrecked this bathroom whether there was a queue? I do not remember. <laughs> that unfortunately. Would be opening that door and looking in the eyes oh, of the other person. Do you say person. jet log alert? <laughs> you know, you, you got to go full Ace Ventura. Just do not look at <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right, here's three wrap-up questions for you on the NFC North. Who wins the division? Um, I will take the chalk. I'm going to stick with Green Bay. I'll go with Green Although Bay. Although I'd love to, I'd love to would, pick Minnesota, but I did that last year and I was dumb. Yeah, I, I do think Green Bay wins it, but betting-wise, the Vikings to win it uh, is, uh, is a solid bet at the yeah. odds right now. Toughest player to project in the division as a whole? Amon Ra, for me. For me, it's uh, probably Alan Lazard. Yeah, I, I think it is Amon Ra. I'm going to go back and look at my Lions uh, after this show. Uh, is it a, Who's the sneakiest player to add? Maybe a dynasty add in this division? Do you take a Ooh. shot at like a Romeo Dubs? Uh, is that a sneaky addition? I mean, sure. When you're talking dynasty and you have 30 players on your team. Wide receiver for the Packers. Yeah, I mean, he was a fourth rounder, which oh, Amon Ra was again. But the hit rate for those guys is, is so... Low yeah, dynasty but, waivers, uh, Amari Rogers or someone. Yeah, like the the forgotten Packers who could just be sitting on the waiver wire. Or yeah, Valus Jones for the Chicago Bears. Is he is he as good as the Bears think, <laughs> or is he as good as everyone else? The thinks. rest of the entire world thinks he is. By the way, to finish the thought before, apparently I said jet log, <laughs> which spiraled us into uh, our once a show necessary poop joke. I was going to say, fantasy players, we can get kind of dumb. If you're listening around this time of year, you get used to staring at different ADPs and you just lock it in your brain and then you're afraid to divert. I was going to say, like, your point about Eckler and DeAndre Swift, like, if you if you have more conviction about DeAndre Swift, drafting him where you would draft Eckler, there's nothing wrong with that. Sure. Go back and look at every single ADP and then how the season ends. Like, it's never chalk. It's never like that. Even apart from injuries, yes, there's injuries that mix in every season. There are stupid, stupid picks that we make or players that we let drop, and then all of a sudden, I mean, look, Stephon Diggs in the fifth round, if you had conviction to take him in the third, you might have been laughed at in your draft. Be willing to be laughed at if you've done the research and you have conviction about a player, and be willing to take DeAndre Swift. Look, you're not going to get Swift and Eckler. You're not going to get them both in your draft. And just because you draw the, the fourth pick or the – fifth pick or the sixth pick you know you're probably not going to end up with both of those guys so if you have to make a call at six and you can't trade down man at six that's where i'm tempted to try to get both you can take eckler uh, and you hope swift gets back to you Whew. you probably don't get eckler at six that's fair so you if you're in the eckler no, spot maybe right. it's four or three but i i'm just saying like be willing to step out if you are sure on a player and don't freak out about adp um the name i'll i'll throw out to continue the the previous conversation i want to just throw out kj osborne as someone that i think yeah, is yeah, worth yeah. a late round flyer obviously adam thielen he's been great but he is getting up there in age if they open this offense up everything we've seen from kj osborne has been good on the field he's a young player who's really had some flashy moments if he gets the opportunity i think he could be a good fantasy asset all right, uh, that is going to do it for today's episode, NFC South on Thursday, another show on Saturday. And if you want the footcast, our exclusive weekly episode for the Foot Clan supporters, you can go to jointhefoot.com. Check out our community. That'll get you access to Foot Clan leagues. Like I said, the bonus episode of the show and a ton of other perks, including discounts on the Ultimate Draft Kit. So check it out, jointhefoot.com. That'll do it. For Icelandic Mike, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, and the Deucers. Yeah. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.